Why do we need unification in physics? What is the theory of everything? Why human beings thought of unifying the physical laws? What was the actual reason behind the quest of a theory of everything? What is the first and second unification? Will we at all find a theory of everything? Well, in this video, I am going to answer all these questions and find out the real actual reason behind the evolution of unification. We are also going to look into the history of unification, how it all started and where it would lead to in future. So sit back and enjoy this fascinating journey of science which encompasses a wide range of ideas. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. A warm welcome to this fresh new video on unification and a theory of everything. So as we do before we go ahead let us look what are the topics that we are covering today. So first we will understand what is unification. We will then understand how the idea of unification evolved and what is the human thinking, how human thought actually led an uh, evolution of unification. The reason why do we need in unification, the first and second unification, what are those? We also need to find out the Maxwell's equations, are they really relativistic or not? Special relativity and Maxwell. We will also learn about what is called the electroweak unification, quantum electrodynamics and the unification, quantum field theory and quantum gravity. So laid down the topics today, we are going to start with this video. But before that, I would like to immensely thank all the subscribers to my extended family because I consider the subscribers to be my extended family for loving this channel, helping me to grow and evolve and putting up comments to my videos. So first we will start with something which is called unification. I am going to tell you a story of unification because the story of unification dates back to the story where we need to recount the process of human evolution. Now physics and sciences that we see uh, is as old as human evolution. The mathematical formulations of scientific theories are as old as cavemen carving their thoughts on the wall. So, as you see, human revolution, uh, evolution is the evolutionary process with the history of primates that led to the emergence of Homo sapiens as a distant species of the hominid family, which includes even all the great apes. So, as we evolved, human beings started to mature and human beings, we, the primates, we started worshipping the forces of nature. The sun, the earth, the storm, the wind, everything, we started to worshipping it because these were God during that times. Further, as we developed with the evolution of human mind and body and everything, we developed hunting instruments because these instruments are important for every human being to hunt and to earn their livelihood so that they can stay alive. Now the question is that after hunting and evolution of human beings, are we all satisfied with that? Are the human primates, their brains were all satisfied with that? Let us find out in this part of the video. So as you see, the evolution happened with different type of things in physics and science growing. So evolution of automobiles starting from 1886 and now you can see how the uh, characters and the shapes and structures of automobiles change. The evolution of living style from the caveman, it changed and now we are living in wide, uh, long apartments, big apartments. The evolution of dress as you can see on the screen also evolved and the evolution of eating style also evolved. So you see earlier uh, cavemen were eating food while just burning and then they were plowing and now we are eating it sitting on a table and a chair and the evolution of human entertainment you can see from 1930s how the televisions and the sets they evolved and they become an all purpose meaning now we have got the uh, you know smart TVs and everything so what I am trying to tell is that with this evolution of automobiles and styles and everything human beings also evolved in their physics and creating instruments 
but the question is that this unification which would lead to what we are looking to are they all related to automobiles and dresses etc how the human mind evolved which led to the unification coming up in this part of the video as you see this is an illustration of the brain of mouse which is so small this is Mackay. This is another, uh, you know, um, animal which has got a brain. This is chimpanzee, and this is human. So this illustration actually tells that how human brains evolved and how a very, uh, I would say, a, a, a very minimal animal like mouse and maca, their, their brains are so small and then they developed into something very complex. We can also see from the human primates how these things evolved and human brains become very complex. So with the evolution of human brain and thought, we also learned how to tame the forces of nature. The forces of nature like wind, storm, lightning, rain, everything we tried to tame. And what we now try to understand is what is called the forces of nature. Now we saw that human evolution took place in terms of body, then in terms of mind. And when the evolution of mind took place, we started to think. And this thinking process actually led us to understand the forces of nature and we have to understand we have we started taming the forces of nature that is creation of shelters etc now with the evolution of human mind once we started taming the forces of nature we also came to know how to understand the forces of nature and what are those uh, basic forces of nature that cavemen and further evolution uh, led to understand these are number one the gravity uh, this interaction produces basically long range forces whose effects can be seen directly in everyday world like falling of apple or anything like that. Uh, the second verse is basically is called the uh, strong force and the weak force which is actually is a fundamental interaction that confines quarks into proton, neutron and other hadron particles. The strong interaction binds neutrons and protons to create atomic nuclei and uh, the weak interaction is the mechanism of interaction between subatomic particles that is responsible for radioactive decay. So the weak nuclear force once through evolution we understood it is basically for decay and strong force because it is named as strong it is responsible holding the subatomic particles thereby forming the matter together. Another force which came into being is electromagnetism. This is an interaction that occurs between particles with electric charge via electromagnetic fields. It is the dominant force in the interaction of atoms and molecules. Now you see that these are basically the forces of nature that we have understood but the question still remains is that what is unification. So you see that human being always try to make things simple. So we always try to make something that gravity plus strong force plus weak force plus electromagnetism would lead to one single grand unified theory. And this theory is what we call unification. So till this part of the video what we have looked is that human evolution, how primates evolved, how the brains evolved, how the lifestyle and everything evolved and with that human mind started to recognize those things, the forces of nature and the basic aim of physics and all science is to take one single grand unified theory which will uh, basically combine all the four fundamental forces of nature. We call here fundamental because these things cannot be further divided. Now that we have understood what is unification right now, the question is that why do we need uh, at all unification coming up in the next part of the video. So you see, uh, always we target and science and physics are targets in simplicity and that is the, uh, basically the target of every scientific endeavor. Now if you take all those forces, gravity, strong, weak and electromagnetism, you will see that each of these have their own complexities in terms of calculation. Each of them had their own mathematical formulations also and these each of them have their own specific set of rules. Right? These are very true. But yet there is one thing in very common that is they are fundamentally, they are all the forces of nature. Now if they have their own complexities, mathematical formulations, everything, yet at the underlying, underpinning thing is that they are the forces of nature. So can we unify those forces? And that is basic the reason of unification. So even in mathematics, when we learn geometry, series, statistics, trigonometry, calculus, arithmetic, all these basically aim to this thing. 
to correlate and unite various universal laws and basic phenomena of nature to explain the activity. So the basic idea of unification is to take everything and put it in one simple basket so that the things are useful. So all these forces of nature, gravity, uh, uh, infinite, electromagnetism, weak force which is responsible for radioactivity and strong force. The basic understanding is that fundamental interactions are the interactions that do not appear to be reducible. That is the definition of what is fundamental interaction. The act of unifying the different laws valid for different phenomena is basically what is called a single theory and the basic objective is this. To simplify mathematical formulations for different physical phenomena so that one single theory can explain everything thereby finding a homogeneity in solutions. That means if the things should be homogeneous there should not be any difference and that is the basic idea and target of any scientific endeavor. So till now what we have understood is the evolution, what it led to unification and now we have understood why do we need unification because we want to simplify all those into one mathematical formula. Having said that now it is the time that we look into the first basic force which human beings were able to understand and that was gravity. So let us see that what was that unification which led to gravity coming up in the next part of our video. So this is sometimes called the first unification. Now if I take gravity, this is derived from the Latin word gravitas, which actually means serious and impressive and seriousness and importance of matter. If you really want to know the origin of gravity, go to my video in the playlist in classical physics, which is called all about gravity, gravitational field, gravitation. I have given detailed about the history of gravity, but this is not the important thing. The most important things uh, right now is that whatever we see on the terrestrial earth, that is the pendulum, the motions, the motion of all bodies, and when we raise our eyes to the sky, then we see the earth and Mercury and Mars and Moon and astronomy. These are the two dimensions. These are the two things which were always keeping human beings in awe, in surprise. And that was basically done with the first unification. And the first unification basically came from this one person Sir Isaac Newton who framed the laws of universal gravitation which tells this nothing new to tell you can just uh, take a pause and read that every particle attracts every other particle in the universe with the force that is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely to the square of the distance this was first published and this came to be known as the first great unification Philosophy naturalist principia mathematica published with the help of edmund halley was first published in 1687 and it changed the entire law of classical mechanics i have talked about this publication a lot of interesting stories in my talk with uh, Francesco Cavina which you can look up into something called demystifying Einstein's field equations and the first test of this capital G the value was done by Henry Cavendish in 1798 much later after the formulation and Newton's law also resembles something similar to Coulomb's law so now you see the first unification is done by Isaac Newton where we unified physics and astronomy now the question is that along with this gravity there are certain things with the ancient Chinese, the Greeks and the Indian philosophers were also being able to understand along with things which are falling and that is coming up in the next part of our video which is called the second unification. Now you see that the ancient Chinese when they worked with something called lodestone and they found that things were attracting to each other and they were unable to explain that phenomena it is called an invisible force. And that is basically the source of magnetism. The ancient Greeks even prior to that found out something which is called uh, the amber which when rubbed would cause similar invisible attraction between the two and this is called electricity. So along with the forces of nature which are things are falling gravity the ancient Greek Chinese Indians I mean to say every human civilization when they struck a piece of a stone with another and they when they found something which is attracting they have already discovered magnetism and electricity. 
Now the physics now has come to understand two observations of nature, electricity and magnetism. Now this electricity and magnetism during that time was understood at two distinct phenomena until the arrival of this great person, English person, James Clerk Maxwell. And what James Clerk Maxwell did is that he defined and united magnetism and electricity into one single phenomena which is called electromagnetism. Here you can see that I have written that it is a combination of electrostatics and magnetism, two distinct but closely intervened phenomena. Now, we, we, we saw that these are actually found by Chinese and Greeks, but this great person actually united that. And how do we, how he did that? This is coming up in this part of the video. I'm not going to explain because I have got a separate playlist called Maxwell's equation. So these are the equations which are the, actually these are 20 equations that in, they became into 8 equation by Oliver Heaviside. And these are the, I would say a modern formulation of the Maxwell's equation. You can very well look into my Maxwell's equation playlist where there is a wonderful uh, video called the history of Maxwell's equation where you can find out the formulation. However, this is the Gauss's law, Gauss's law for magnetism, Faraday's law of induction and the Ampere-Maxwell law. So what actually did all this law? Let us find out. So all this actually described uh, uh, the demonstrated electric and magnetic fields are basically two manifestations of the same phenomena. So now we have already uh, been taming from the cave days the forces of nature. We understood and when unified one with Isaac Newton with gravity, he united physics and astronomy. And now Maxwell uh, actually united gravity, uh, electricity, magnetism and light into together. But hold on. The question is that with the advent of Maxwell, these things were united. But there were certain things which is taking place in a patent office at Bern somewhere out there in Switzerland. And that also led to a new unification. What was that? Who was that person who was doing a little bit of mathematics at a Swiss office in Bern coming up in the next part of our video? The question is that with the advent of Albert Einstein, everything changed and with the theory of relativity, uh, that is uh, energy and mass equivalence, mostly the special theory of relativity, the question rose that are the Maxwell's equations also relativistic? Because if you have found magnetism, electricity, light, etc., then we have to find out something which would surely match with Einstein's relativity. Then, after, uh, otherwise, how this can uh, be a unified theory? So we found that yes, Maxwell's equations are fully relativistic, which follows from the fact that they are covariants under Lorentz transformation. Einstein also did another thing, that is another unification, that was Newton and the classical mechanics thought space and time to be different, and this was united into one lump, which is called space-time. So now you see that with the gravity and electromagnetism already united, and, the, and we are going towards the history of unification. We also found that the Albert Einstein's theory of relativity also united Maxwell's equation under the covariant theory. And it says that the uh, nothing can move more than the speed of light or the speed of light is constant for all observers initial frame of reference. That is also being followed with theory of relativity. But the most important is that we are all underlying in electromagnetism and gravity. But something also got united at a very, 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 very small minuscule subatomic level. What was that? Coming up in the next part of our video. So we arrived at a phase when we di uh, discovered what is called a weak interaction. This is actually we saw that is the uh, uh, it is uh, responsible for the radioactive decay of atoms. So here is a model you can see this was the proton which I have shown over here and this is the electron which is shown over here and this actually leads to an annihilation and creation of anti neutrino which is determined by this symbol. So what we find out from here is that this three gentlemen Steven Weinberg on the left Sheldon Glashow at the middle and Abdus Salam on the right actually showed that the electromagnetic and weak nuclear forces can be understood as a single interaction. Right? So the electro weak interaction is basically a fundamental force representing unification of the electromagnetic, electromagnetic and weak nuclear force. And these three physicists actually did something which is called a Weinberg Salam theory. So 
uh, and other physicists in due course normalized the Weinberg Salam Glashow model by spontaneous breaking of symmetry and introducing a new particle which is called the Higgs boson. Okay, so this is uh, actually for which they won a Nobel Prize. Now, what actually happened? So, we saw that the unification energy is something 246 giga electron volt. If you attain that kind of energy, which is not possible at this time, they would merge into a single force. And if the temperature is high enough, 10 to the power 15 kelvins, then the electromagnetic force and the weak force will merge into what is called a combined electroweak force. So now we see that electromagnetism is also united with electroweak, which is an electroweak force, electromagnetism and weak force. For that, in 1979, they got the Nobel Prize in Physics for their contributions of unification of weak and electromagnetic force. So now we have understood with something which is called electroweak in unification. But hold on, there are other small theories of unification which still took place. What are those coming up in the next part of our video? Now I have made a very detailed video on quantum field theory but this is a very important unification which is called quantum electrodynamics and this is simple. Uh, special relativity merged with quantum mechanics forms a quantum electrodynamics. So, this is actually what is called, you saw that we found out the relativistic equations of Maxwell's, that is the relativistic equations. Now, we are trying to find a relativistic quantum field theory, which is in a full agreement between quantum mechanics and special relativity and this is being achieved. So, what does QED tells? QED is basically, it mathematically describes all phenomena involving electrically charged particles interaction by means of exchange of photons. So, here you can see and most importantly one great person who made it possible, I mean to say made it easy was none other than Richard P. Feynman. On the right hand side of your screen you can see Feynman diagrams. Uh, I will make a later a video explaining what are Feynman diagrams. These are very simple uh, diagrams which actually shows the uh, creation and annihilation of different subatomic particles. So, this was quantum electrodynamics, a uh, marriage between special relativity and uh, uh, special relativity and quantum mechanics. So, this is in full agreement with quantum mechanics and special relativity. Formulation was done by the famous English physicist Paul Dirac. Uh, creation and annihilation operators, as you can see on the screen, comes with a hat and a dagger sign and it is explained very well through fine mind diagrams. Eugen Wigner, Pascal Jordan, Heisenberg and Enrico Fermi widely uh, you know, contributed for further to the development of quantum electrodynamics and it got a more robust mathematical structure it was given. This was another unification, unification between uh, quantum mechanics and special theory of relativity. But let us remember that we are still keeping one thing quite unnoticed that is Einstein's gravity. Can it be united with another theory? Let us see in this part of the video. Now, if the users are really interested in what is called quantum field theory, I have already made three videos on quantum field theory. It is in their mind playlist quantum field theory. But the basic idea is very simple. Classical field theory and special relativity plus quantum mechanics would lead to another unification which is called quantum field theory. Now, quantum field theory treats particles as excited states. We can also call them quanta of their underlying uh, quantum fields, which are more fundamental than the particles. The equation of motion of the particle is determined by minimization of the Lagrangian, a functional uh, of fields associated with the particle. Interactions between particles are described by interaction in terms of the Lagrangian involving their corresponding quantum fields and each interaction can be very well and easily described by the genius of Feynman that is called Feynman diagrams according to the perturbation theory of quantum mechanics. So, now you see that still now we have done almost uh, 2 plus 2, 4 unification. Isaac Newton with gravity, Maxwell with Maxwell's equation, then we found out the relativistic equations with Maxwell and special relativity. Now we are into what is called quantum electrodynamics, which is special relativity and quantum mechanics. And now we are into quantum field theory, which is classical field, special relativity and quantum mechanics. Question is that, where is our dear gravity? Is it going unnoticed? Let us find it out in this part of the video. So, you see that string theory actually tries to unite, it is still undergoing, it is not yet finalized, general relativity and quantum mechanics. 
So it is basically a very big generativity on astrophysical phenomena with quantum mechanics very small. And quantum field theory unites special relativity, classical field theory and quantum mechanics and it has got two, uh, uh, two types of theory. One is called quantum electrodynamics and quantum chromodynamics. I am trying to explain quantum electrodynamics in my next video but quantum chromodynamics till now it is too complex to understand. Okay, So let us now find where is gravity. Now here you can see that there is a theory which is still going on which is called quantum gravity. So quantum gravity is basically you can call this Max Planck plus Heisenberg plus general relativity equal to quantum gravity. What I am trying to mean is that this is a field of theoretical physics that tries to describe gravity according to the principles of quantum mechanics. It actually deals with environments in which neither gravitational nor quantum mechan effects can be ignored such as the vicinity of black holes or similar compact astrophysical objects maybe Newton stars, neutron stars. So what we see is that here you can see that quantum gravity is a theory which is still under construction with principles of general relativity and quantum theory. So what we are trying to achieve is C the velocity of light, H bar the reduced Planck's constant combined with G the Newton's constant coming together to form units of mass, length and time. But Quantum gravity has one peculiar thing which is called this one, the graviton. This is a hypothetical, quant uh, hypothetical quantum of gravity, an elementary particle that mediates the force of gravitation interaction. Now there is no complete qu quantum field theory of gravitons due to an outstanding mathematical problem which is called renormalization of general relativity. Now what is renormalization of general relativity? We will come later but try to understand that it cannot be reduced uh, ignoring the perturbation theories. So here you can see that three of the fundamental forces of physics are described within the standard model or by quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. The current understanding of the fourth force that is gravity which is based on Albert Einstein general relativity which is formulated entirely different form of classical physics is unable to find out a place in the standard model. So that is why we are still unable to find out a theory of everything because it is the elus elusive particle we call graviton which is not being able to find out a uh, proper understanding mathematically. So strong force is there with gluons, weak force is there with W and Z bosons, electromagnetic simple with photons but gravity is not with gravitons. So that's it for today's video. I have given you a complete understanding of the unification, the history of unification, the evolution of human mind, how we incorporate the other theories and what is the search and what is the future which is still, still going on. I'm very thankful for those who have watched this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please do subscribe to my channel Physics for Students. Click on the bell icon to get all the notification from Physics for Students. You can always contact me at this email ID where I always reply and I've got an exclusive channel on General Relativity uh, which is General Relativity Explained. You can find it on uh, YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. Thank you for being with me, subscribing and helping me to grow. Physics for students will be soon back with yet another video. But till then, goodbye.